Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Milton Mueller. Milton is Professor and Program Director in Cybersecurity Policy at Georgia Tech. More generally, he is an internationally prominent scholar specializing in the political economy of information and communication. He is the author of seven books and a multitude of journal articles delving into public policy, but also science and technology, law, economics, communications, and international studies. Milton is also the co-founder and director of the Internet Governance Project, a policy analysis center for global internet governance. Milton notably participated in proceedings and policy development activities of ICANN, the International Telecommunications Union, the National Telecommunications and Information Administration, as well as regulatory proceedings in the European Commission, China, Hong Kong, and New Zealand. Okay, Milton, uh, you know about our three plus one format. You get three questions and at the end, your soapbox moment. So um, let's start with question one. How do you interpret the relationship between users accessing more content and services online and the impact that this may have on telecom operators? Yeah, that's um, a very obvious question to me. It's, uh, you know, the, the content and services online increases a demand for the network component of the digital system. And uh, in any uh, normal industry and in normal mentality, that would be a good thing, right? Uh, <laughs> there's more demand, uh, you know, if a, a restaurant owner has people standing out uh, outside uh, waiting in line to get in, uh, they, they're happy because uh, they know that what they what they provide is is um, in demand and, and people want to pay for it. Um, but I think it's a very important to recognize that as part of the liberalization of telecoms and the, um, the growth of the digital economy, uh, we have entered into a specialization and industrial structure change such that the different components of information and communication technology become separate markets and not vertically integrated. So we made tremendous progress with computers when we started to separate operating systems from the equipment, right? And when we, we made tremendous progress in uh, information services when the protocol for communication was separate from the actual provision of service. You know, we got a nice neutral non-proprietary standard, call it TCP IP or the World Wide Web, and everybody could use it, uh, but it was not linked or, or controlled in any way by the service providers. And before that, it, it seems like ancient history now, you know, the, the cable TV operators and the telcos thought that they were going to have these vertically integrated interactive communication systems. Uh, but of course, the market didn't evolve that way, and it's a very good reason why it didn't. The people who are good at networking should provide networking service. The people who are good at information services and content should provide those. And there's no necessary connection. You know, if you're good at one, uh, there's no reason you should be good at the other. And so the reason the internet was so revolutionary was that it totally freed the service providers and the information content providers from uh, any kind of a integrated connection to the network operator. And, and that, that's why we got this explosion of innovation and service provision. And, and if the telcos, uh, you know, are pricing their services right and operating their services right, they should be benefiting too. But the value that has migrated to the information services and the content is in no way related to the value of the networking itself. I think that's that's interesting in the sense that um, those two elements obviously are, are complementary, the infrastructure and what goes over it, because no one wants to buy access to an empty cable and no one can have access to services if they don't have a cable or, or some form of infrastructure. But I think the fact that you mentioned that um, they're not necessarily linked or, or related in terms of value is, is, is important. And I think it will reflect on, on maybe not the next question, but the question afterwards. So let me switch to question two. What are the inherent dangers, if any, 
of big tech being requested, uh, nicely requested, of course, uh, to pay for the network of telecom operators? Well, big tech and small tech and every information service provider is paying for the network, right? That's, that's my point. I, I think I didn't put it quite right the first time. Uh, you are correct. They are complementary services, but they are separate services. And somebody that's really good at providing networking services and not necessarily the right person to be uh, offering an information service. Um, so if you're saying that, um, you know, big tech is not paying for the network, well, that's obviously not true. I'm sure that they're that these cloud service providers and the the content providers are are ordering and installing gigantic uh, fiber optic bandwidth capabilities in addition to their computing capabilities they're going to need enormous amounts of bandwidth and then all of the users of these services are paying for internet access into their home so uh, and of course the amount of internet access that people want both on the supply side and the demand side of these information services is increasing regularly. So how is it that the telcos feel like they're not being paid when <laughs> the demand for and usage of their services is increasing massively over this period? Either they're not pricing their services right, uh, or they're, you know, not a very efficient provider. I, I just don't know how you can not make money when everybody in the country is, needs your connectivity to get access to these high value services. It's, it's sort of a crazy thing. It's sort of like the, the you know, I, I use the web to access my bank account and I might be transferring, you know, $10,000 with a single message. Uh, does that mean that the telco somehow deserves you know, a, a share of that bank transfer? Uh, no, they, they deserve to be compensated for moving the packets that order the, you know, the bank to, to make that transfer, but they don't, <laughs> they don't have any, uh, the, the, the value of the bank account that I have or the value of the banking services that I use is in no way uh, something that they have a claim on. I think it's, it's kind of a crazy thing. And the same thing goes with, with, you know, the information services. And I think it's also a mistake to view all of these information services running over the network as big tech. Of course, uh, large search providers uh, and advertising sort of retailers like Google and Facebook are, have commanded uh, the lion's share of activity because of the way they aggregate users into these domains where they can interact with each other. And there's a, there's a network effect there, a network externality. But there are millions and millions of uh, small service providers, uh, some of whom are aggregated by Facebook. For example, um, many businesses have a Facebook account instead of a web page or um, Many businesses uh, have an Amazon uh, presence uh, rather than just uh, trying to operate a retail thing on their own, and, and they all profit from that. So I think it's, um, it, it's clear there's a, there's a complementary relationship here, and I don't, again, understand why the telcos think that they're not uh, getting what they deserve and getting what they need from that relationship. And in terms of the dangers, uh, essentially, you're saying that the telcos are monopoly gatekeepers who have a right to hold you up and charge uh, some of the value of that service that you're getting, your consumer surplus, and not just the value of the connectivity that they're providing. And I think that's, that's very dangerous. That means you're creating, you're trying to maybe move back to that uh, telco monopoly of the 1970s in which you know, the, the telco controlled everything simply because it was the, the gatekeeper to everything. I think, I think that's the key word that you just used, which is control. Uh, probably that um, it, it, must have, it must be a very difficult transition if you've been in control of everything, and including you know, 
the color of the phone that people could order and where you they would put it <laughs> when, when when you asked for your connectivity back in the days and now to have that control slip away uh, and maybe it's more an issue of control than a, a, an issue of money who knows um, let me switch to the third question You've answered it already a, a little bit. I, I think I can guess what your answer is, but um, let's elaborate. Um, do you think it is appropriate to compare the contribution of big tech and telcos in infrastructure, as suggested by some, mostly telecom operators? Well, I don't know what they mean by compare in the sense that if you mean this this argument that their market capitalization is smaller than the market capitalization of the of the infra infrastructure, well, that's simply the market saying, you know, what is the value add of the services that you get, right? And for the telcos to say, well, our networks are complementary inputs into your services, and therefore it's unfair that your services are worth are, are valued higher in the market than ours are. I mean, that's a that's a very primitive kind of non-economic logic, right? I mean, it's it's like me saying, well, um, you know, I sold you uh, the beef for a hamburger. And now you're charging, you know, eight dollars for this uh, finely cooked and, and well prepared hamburger. And uh, hey, you got my beef for only a dollar. Uh, what's going on here? Um, sorry, <laughs> you know, it's that's people making value decisions with their dollars and with their choices in the marketplace. So I think. Um, it's not fair to to compare, you know, on this strict sort of oh they they make a lot of uh, money and we are more commoditized, uh, competitive, uh, and therefore lower margin business. Um, I think the answer to that is for you to find new ways to add value that that command higher prices, and not for you to sort of tax or, or somehow appropriate the value that other businesses are making. I, I, I'm going to keep a mental image of telcos selling beef <laughs> from now on. <laughs> that, that's going to be an interesting one to, to keep in mind during the debates. Um, so we've had our three questions, and now comes the important moment where I put on screen uh, the two powerful women uh, in Brussels, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, President of the European Commission, and Roberta Metzola, President of the European Parliament. Uh, we are expecting a uh, consultation uh, in the fall uh, on this issue. Um, but, you know, you can already start influencing that consultation or responding to it by having a one minute to two minutes uh, soapbox moment where you, you know, your, your wisdom of the past decades uh, can be shared. <laughs> that made you surprised. Um, uh, sadly, it is a topic we've been discussing for the past decade um, where you can share your wisdom <laughs> with uh, the powers that be in Brussels. Yes, I would say you, you really are. It, it really is a question of looking forward or looking backwards. Uh, the telcos are looking backwards. They're saying we had this nice, comfortable monopoly world uh, in which everybody had to go through us and you didn't have any choice. And uh, we have been put into a new situation in which uh, there are many options and uh, many services that are built on the back of our infrastructure. Uh, the telcos have to accept the fact that they are, in fact, providing a fundamental infrastructural component to the information economy, which is connectivity. Uh, but the fact that there's so much additional value built on the backs of that connectivity does not mean that they have a right to steal it or appropriate it or grab it uh, simply because uh, of, you know, they want it. I mean, I don't see any basis for them uh, changing the fundamental economic structure of the internet uh, based on the fact that uh, the these information service companies are creating more value than they are. Uh, they should be able to price their services and play uh, that critical role in the infrastructure uh, without, uh, you know, feeling like they're they're the losers in in what is a complementary game and not a competitive game
I think that's that's a nice way um, of of uh, summing it up. Let's let's hope there are no losers coming out of this debate. Uh, that the telcos realize that they beef might not be sexy, but you know it's a ground component and everyone wants it, uh, and and so is connectivity. And you know the the service providers um, might might have um, higher margins, but are clearly in a different business, um, to, to, to quote you, your answers. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Mueller, for uh, taking the time to answer all the way from Georgia, um, and especially knowing that your classes start next week. Um, so uh, this will come out in the fall. And uh, we look forward to seeing your contributions in that uh, debate uh, as it uh, evolves in Brussels. Thank you so much. Thank you, Caroline.